All right. Hi, everybody. Today is Tuesday, October 16th, and this is the weekly SIG testing meeting. I am your host, Aaron of SIG Beard. Uh, we are being recorded and will be posted to YouTube shortly, so please keep in mind that we follow a code of conduct, which basically means don't be a jerk. On today's agenda, we're going to talk a little bit about uh, Cube Test V2 with some initial ideas proposed by Sen. Uh, and we're going to talk a little bit about uh, Patrick Bowley's efforts to refactor the E2E framework. And if we have time at the end, I wanted to remind folks that we're giving an update at the community meeting. So I have some slides to run through. And I have written a charter and have popped it up to the steering committee for review uh, pending any other objections. Uh, so with that, I will hand off to Sen to talk about KubeTest V2. V2. Hey. So uh, I'm proposing this initial idea of some cube test improvement, or I mean, rather than improvement, we probably just want to rewrite a brand new cube test V2 to resolve some of the pains we are having with um, using cube test. Um, I wrote out a few bullet points on the things I currently have in mind that we want to. Uh, resolve and improve on, and a few goals. For example, the main pain point uh, I, fe I feel these days is um, we lack of, so cube test is actually very powerful. It can do a lot of things, but we really lack of examples and docs on like, for example, how to run tests locally or how to run tests with an existing cluster. And there were, uh, too many, really too many flags to manage within kube test. If you look at package main, there's like two or 300 flags across maybe 10 different files. And even people like me doesn't remember like what which each flag means. And also we have a giant underlying layer of bash. We, we want to get rid of them like for years, but we never been able to, for example, the famous hack in uh, sh. Also, there's, uh, if you remember, for our, our GC job, we are currently utilizing everything under the cluster. They're like cube up and cube down. Mm, it will be benefit if we can write these in Go as well. So uh, also, under test infra, there is a kubetestedd.py scenario file, which if possible, we also want to put that into Go rather than like make it lingering around. And so that every time we want to set up a CI job, we need to clone test infra. Although currently I put it into the bootstrap image, but ideally I want to make it part of the kubetest setup. Speaking of that, there are some cool items we can use, we can utilize, or we should utilize in the future. Uh, the first thing is kind, uh, which Ben is working on. So if I want to run some end-to-end -end test locally, I should not, um, I should be able to, without depending on a specific deployer, say I need to have a G Cloud account or AWS cluster, uh, I should be able to run a local EDE with my um, my own Kubernetes binary relatively easy. Um, and also, even if I want to run an on-prem EDE test, I should be able to utilizing cluster API to managing cluster lifecycle rather than uh, cube up and cube down script in the future. Um, so, some of the goals I, I list here is um, I want to have a pure Go cube test rather than a zillion of bash script varying underneath or, or a lot of like mm, uh, shell command. So uh, kind is already in Go, that's a good news. So it's probably easy to hook it up and once we write a Go deployer for GCE. Um, then we probably uh, can able to clean up everything under cluster slash. 
Um, okay. Can I ask yeah. a clarification on that? Um, so I know that cube test also calls out to deployers, like we've got one in there for Azure as well. Is Are you saying that you'd merge that into the EDE framework instead of having a separate cube test and EDE.test binary? Uh, no, uh, I mean, we still want to support uh, different kind of deployers. Although currently I believe the Azure deployer is actually in package main. Uh, we want to put it into its own, at least in its own package. Ideally, we should put the code into like a provider Azure or a separate repo so you can just manage it. Um, we can provide an interface function like register deployer so you can just uh, include cube test and, and register your deployer from your repo rather than inside of test infra. Okay, but the deployer you're talking about is the one that's in cube test today. Yeah, okay. it is. I, I'd want to, so this is Andrew from VMware. Mm -hmm. I, I don't, although not, it doesn't seem like Go plugins have exploded in popularity the way they thought they would. I've done a lot of deep dives on those and there is a way to make those work to your advantage here. And the best way I can describe Go plugins is it's it's like building Apache with the functionality that you want at build time, but not necessarily loading it at runtime. Although you can, it just becomes more troublesome. But it, it would allow what you're talking about with uh, custom versions of cube test. Um, yeah. That would that would work pretty well. But I, I wanted to also say like, don't forget about the cluster uh, um, API. Uh, yeah. Project yeah. that's, that's currently it's, going on that can greatly impact a lot of this. It's it that's in the doc. Um, okay. Sorry, I'm being. Yeah. Lazy. So I think one of the big things is that, like, for example, with the cluster API, we can probably just say like, here's the cluster API config, and move instead of having like 200 top level cube test flags for configuring that cluster, you just specify the config and pass it to the cluster API, and move all of that mangling cube test flags into flags for another binary. Well, and, that, and, that, and that's what I'm doing for my vSphere deployer. There's just yeah. like a shape file because there's, I, why add a thousand flags? Just have one flag for your deployer. Right, but we can probably actually standardize that pattern and like, it, without even necessarily using plugins, tr treating them like plugins at least gets us to the point where we stop having everyone just like register global things and we scope a deployer to a package and at the same and the command line. Uh, something else I've thought about that is in here, I think cube test should probably grow some tooling for, I don't think we can totally get rid of shelling out to other commands. For example, building Kubernetes is going to be like calling another command, but I think something that we should get away from is kind of like how ad hoc that's implemented. I think we should make some tooling for manage, like for example, right, right now we, we get git cube. Um, right now we just kind of like dump that somewhere. I think probably what we should add is cube test should have some tooling for making like a homder and managing copies of the scripts and things there. And we should build some good tooling for like, here is how you shell out. Um, like for example, right now we construct bash strings, we should probably construct argument vectors instead. I, I, like I, I think we do also want the deployers in Go, but I don't think what we actually need from those is necessarily like say compiling them into cube test. I think actually might be better if they weren't. So the binary is not so big um, and they maybe like, you know, download a plugin or something. But uh, having them written in something like Go gets us away from like, this is a brittle shell script and we basically have a brittle shell command calling another brittle shell command. Um, I think we need, we need, we need the interface to a deployer to cover more of these things like passing a config or something because like one of the biggest things is just the absurd amount of flags and even making them a plugin or something doesn't, isn't necessarily the thing that gets us yeah. away from that. I, the, the, but I think what you said earlier was was my biggest thing and, and you and I talked about this a couple of weeks ago I think even you weren't necessarily clear on it either so that tells me how complicated it is but the, the, all of the uh, the shell scripts and that you get when you download the kubernetes.tar.gz I believe in the cluster area 
it's like, okay, so these match up with some of the deployers, some of them don't, and oh, there's no go equivalent. It's really not clear like what needs to be there and what doesn't. I want to unpack a couple things. I don't want those to exist anymore. Yeah, so that's why I'm trying to ascertain the scope of what we're talking about here. Uh, so the pain points up talk talks about like a lot of flags and we're thinking we could get away from that by using a uh, cluster API uh, Talks about lack of running tests locally, and we think we can get, get away from that by using kind um, So the underneath a layer of fast scripts, there's there's e2e ginkgo um, I don't think we're talking about replacing ginkgo as part of this effort. Is that correct? Right Okay so that, that, that script would continue to exist, or would we just construct the set of flags that we pass to Ginkgo further up inside of Kube test? The latter. We have some work on this today, but it's not rolled out to everyone. I think one of the biggest reasons we need a V2 is that since Kube test runs all over the place, it's really hard for us to like make a breaking thing. But if we were to start over some things like, you know, Less, less bash calls, more like calling a well-defined command, minimizing the number of flags we have to pass to it, telling people to use configs themselves, um, making some of this more modular. Like the deployer interface kind of gets us there, but it doesn't, the current one doesn't cover everything. And it's a bit ad hoc. So that's where I, I think uh, to, to Andrew's point, are we saying that we're, removing our dependency on shell scripts inside of cluster is part of this effort? I don't, I think we should push things in that way, but I don't think we can, like, I think that's, that is itself kind of a big scope. We should look towards pushing deployers towards behaving right. better. And like, possibly we could decide that we're just not going to integrate ones that are that poorly behaved in the new world. Okay. I mean, so right now, I what don't they think do like, like implementing the alternative fits as like a scope for fixing yeah. the test. So, so Hippie is right. We, we, I did say I wanted to time box our discussion here. So I think there is a lot of interest in this. These do sound like good ideas. To me, it seems like the next step is to figure out uh, where we're hoping to land some parts of these and see like a design proposal. But I think these, these all sound great. Selfishly, I want to understand, I can catch up with you offline, how much of this we want to, if any, do we want to talk about this as part of our future roadmap as we update the community uh, during the community meeting this week? Me and Ben will probably prepare a design doc okay. pretty soon and we'll share it to the success team. All right. No uh, thanks a bunch. Uh, so Patrick, Oli, you wanted to talk to us a little bit about your efforts on refactoring the E2E tests or E2E framework. Yeah, thank you. So I'm, I'm basically here because I have a, an open pull request and an ongoing discussion with Timothy about that pull request. And he suggested that I come to this meeting again. I, I did a presentation before I started with a, a general outline of a concept. Uh, I don't know, a few, few months back. And at that time we had identified, I think, three main problems in the current end-to-end -end test binary. And it, uh, it's basically the complementary part to kube test. It's the one that you actually run inside a cluster or against a cluster, the, what, what's in uh, Kubernetes under test end-to-e, E2E, that has, that produces a Ginkgo binary, a Ginkgo test suite. And that's the one that I'm working on. I, I, and I'm facing similar issues with, with kube test and provider dependencies in that code. So for background, my, my, I personally have started working with Kubernetes beginning of this year. And the first thing that I tried to find out was if I make a change to something in kube, Kubernetes or in my own project that's, that's outside of Kubernetes, how do I do end-to-end -end testing? That led me to this whole end-to-end -end test binary and how it's done currently. And the big problem that I highlighted in red in the meeting minutes is this direct dependency of the core framework on a variety of cloud providers. Uh, and direct dependency in this context means that there is an API call that needs say G Cloud or AWS SDK. So all of these packages get imported when someone tries to use the end-to-end -end framework. I, tried to vendor in the existing end-to-end -end framework into my own project with Deb, and it was horrible. 
just chasing down the dependency tree and finding out the right versions of everything was just almost impossible. It was possible in the end, but a lot of work. So I tried to figure out whether that is really how things need to be or whether that can be changed. Uh, the part, the other related part was when I'm writing a test, how do I handle command line flags? How do I handle extra files? But those two problems have been solved. The code has been merged into Kubernetes master. Um, so now I could write tests using the framework. I just can't really import it into my project. And that's what I'm trying to fix with this pull request. Um, as I said, the current status is that the end-to-end -end framework itself, a rather large package, contains the code, or base, can, contains basically all the utility code in one package, including the provider-specific calls. And as a result, uh, the test binaries that get published by Kubernetes also depend on those. This is not a problem for me. I would write my own end-to-end -end test definition, at end-to-end Go file where I basically define, or I want to define what kind of providers I have. If, if Kubernetes decides to support AWS, GCE, and all of those in one binary, I don't have a problem with that, but I need to get the, the core framework changed, otherwise I, I can't use it. So what I started doing is I looked at all the direct calls to cloud providers. Usually you can find them in the source code with an if check. If provider is GCE, then do this. If it's AWS, do that. And what I've done is I've taken that code, those locations where we have these if checks and I've created an abstract interface I'm, I'm calling it provider again. It's perhaps a poor name choice and perhaps that threw Timothy off. It's, it's really the same code that already is in the framework. It's just getting moved into separate packages and it gets hidden or it gets accessed via an abstract API. And then there is a registration mechanism where a certain implementation of that uh, interface can say, well, I'm, I'm provider GCE. If someone chooses GCE on the command line, call my code. That's, that's what the pull request does. And the code that gets called is exactly the same one as before. It's just refactored and, and made optional because the framework itself just needs the, the interface and some implementation of the interface, but it doesn't actually pull in the implementations. That gets done by the author of a test suite by importing the provider specific packages and then an init function in those basically adds themselves to a global table that says uh, we, we have provider support for GCE, for AWS, or we don't. And if we don't, we just end up with a default, which is you can run against, against a local cluster and it just uses the, the official Kubernetes APIs and nothing else. Um, so that's the core framework. I tried to do this conversion in, in the core framework as much as possible. I found some cases, um, the ingress handling, where it just was impossible. So I, I, I also took a, different, a slightly different approach there. I moved the ingress code into a new package and it still calls, I think, just Google, Google uh, G Cloud directly for most of the work that it needs to do. Uh, but because it's now a separate package, it doesn't necessarily end up in my test suite unless I want to use a test that uses it, of course. But for that, this particular code is not something that I, that I would use for personally, so I, I don't care. Um, and then I'm also interested in importing some tests. That's an ongoing activity in the uh, stick storage uh, where we are looking at the entry tests and how they could be applied to external components. That's pretty much what I'm working on. I'm working on a CSI driver and I want to use the same tests in my test suite, in my end-to-end -end testing, <clears throat> which isn't running in Kubernetes. It's not, it's not the upstream end-to-end -end test binary that I want to use. I want to have my own one, potentially with additional tests that are specific to my driver. 
but I want to be, want the ability to import the tests too. And a question? Uh, so are we looking at moving this framework out, like for example, into staging? Uh, because I think a pattern that we've really tried to avoid is people actually depending on importing Kubernetes Kubernetes. Yep. If, if that is, I think it would make sense. Yeah, uh, that would be further out right now. Um, I think this is just, this pull request is, is a first step, which is already usable. I have a test repository on my GitHub account where I'm setting up a, a CSI end-to-end -end repository, which vendors in the core framework and has its own test suite just as proof of concept. So yeah, it, this is, this is uh, the long-term goal would indeed be a, a separate package. Okay, that, yeah. That would make sense. But the future direction, that is where I'm, I'm currently uncertain where, where Timothy is going because he, he started commenting on some aspects of the pull request and saying that this is not the direction we want to go uh, without saying what the direction is. I think I'm getting my, my impression is that he's trying to not have any vendor specific code in Kubernetes. I believe that is eventually the direction of the project. Yeah. Uh, but it's not super clear exactly when that will happen or there's a bunch of open questions like we're still determining how do we test this but I think he, so it looks like a, a big thing that's coming up here is volume tests and that's your motivation I have talked to some people working on storage in uh, GCP and uh, they seem to at least in principle be in agreement that really all of these tests that are just testing GCP storage they shouldn't be in tree as soon as they can get a CSI plugin and roll over to that. I should be moving those and testing them against that repo and just not have them in core. I think Michelle is very much interested in that. And that's why she would love to get this pull package merged so that we can proceed with setting up uh, an end to end test suite outside of Kubernetes while still using the same infrastructure. And that's just not, not possible at the moment. I would think that maybe the, the thing to say then is that, so, that, that maybe we can, I'll have to look at the focus, but maybe we can just say that this is a stopgap then. I do think probably, hopefully everyone, I think agrees that the eventual ideal place is that the actual vendor tests are in vendor repos and that like maybe the core framework is shared and reusable, but <clears throat> uh, it's like an actual exported thing. It doesn't include the vendor specific stuff. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm fine with that. It's, it's just, and, I've, and I see this pull request as a, as a good step towards that because right now, can, can vendor specific code is... You, so you threw out that Michelle is interested in this. Do you think you can get her to help review? I think one of the problems here is just that like, while we all want to see this, uh, we all do way too many things and uh, given that like providers aren't quite to moving out yet, this isn't like uh, super high up on our plates at the moment. Uh, she started looking at some of these uh, and she pointed out that uh, for example, one of the, one of the vendor APIs is, a great, uh, is about creating a persistent disk and I think she just jumped on that and pointed out uh, in the pull request review, you will see her comments yeah. saying that, yeah, we have something similar elsewhere, but now that I've looked at that other thing, I just found that it calls the exactly same code that we already have in framework for this thing. So it's just another wrapper around uh, the problematic code. It doesn't access, it, it doesn't actually solve the problem. So, but yeah, if, perhaps she can, she can get more involved with test, with reviewing. The question is, do, do, do I need to have another discussion with Timothy or how, how do we move forward with, with his, what, his apparent uh, uh, rejection of his proposal? I'm, I'm uh, not sure, I'm, I, I'm not sure what, what, he, what, he, what he wants to do differently. That's my, my that, problem. That to me sounds like the next uh, step here because I think it, it could, you know, it's kind of difficult to, to figure out what he's thinking when he says those very terse statements without providing additional context. So. I, it, it certainly looks based on what you've said and what I'm looking at in the code here that this is a stopgap measure and this does move us in the direction 
Um, just because we eventually want to live in a world where none of the vendor specific code is entry means that you have to block us from taking step by step progress to that world. So this looks really reasonable, but I would like to understand what his concerns are. The, the one thing that maybe jumps out to me is, yeah, maybe naming is hard and provider may not be the, the best word for that abstraction. Uh, maybe it's the sort of thing that needs some input uh, from the, the cloud provider folks, because maybe this interface looks an awful lot like an abstraction around the different operations that different cloud providers offer and maybe they're doing something there. Maybe it's the different cluster providers. So I think we can stay, I don't think, it doesn't seem like it's the cluster providers, but so maybe there could be some refinement there, but this looks and sounds super reasonable. Um, I just, I also don't know what the objection is, that, but this, this is like awesome progress since you last checked in. Yeah, it's, it's ready for merging now. <laughs> so I guess I, I, I was hoping to have this discussion here with Timothy. Now we are just speculating. So I guess without right. him presenting his objections, we will not make much progress further here in this meeting. So right. I'll try to catch him on, on, on Slack tomorrow. Or, well, tomorrow will, will be tight, but yeah, I'll, I'll try to catch him, see what, what he thinks. Okay. Um, I would be interested in participating or, or helping out if that would be useful. So, yeah, I think this is really just a, a discussion. And do you mean we should do a, do another meeting or just an online chat with you on in the same room or uh, we, can, in, in, in. we can do an online chat. We've also historically uh, for some things like this that need to be discussed face to face. Uh, we can schedule breakout sessions so we could uh, give that uh, a shot. Uh, but I think let's just see if we can't find a way to ping Tim today and see if we can schedule something offline and yeah. go from there. Today is is almost over for me, but if you can ping him, and I'm 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 trying to be available. Sure, absolutely. What uh, what's your time zone? Are you? I'm, I'm in I'm in I'm in Germany. Okay, it's gotcha. 11, 11 p.m. now. Half, well, well, half half past ten. <laughs> uh, really appreciate you uh, putting in the time to show up today. No, no problem. Okay, I think we're done with that now. Thanks. Cool, and that puts us at time. Uh, thank you, everybody, for showing up today, and have a Terrific Tuesday.